support Wrestle Talk. Give us a subscribe. Rusev wants sex in the morning. Rusev wants sex in the evening. Rusev wants sex all night long. Because that's Rusev Day. Just when you thought that Rusev, Lana and Bobby Lashley love triangle couldn't get any worse, it just got really, really weird. I'm Ollie Davis and this is the long-awaited return of WWE Raw in about four minutes. Paige here. Not now, Paige. In an odd start to the episode, because she's been missing for a few months, Paige made her return to main roster programming, still claiming to be Asuka and Kairi Sane's manager, which was already a little off because of the total colonial vibes, and now even more out of place since the women's tag team champions have turned heel in her absence. They turned on her pretty quickly during an in-ring promo with Asuka spitting green mist in her face, which would have been more effective if Paige started criticizing their recent heel actions instead of totally ignoring that was a thing. Becky Lynch ran down to defend Paige, Team PCB forever, which led to a really good TV match against Kairi Sane, which Lynch won with a disarmor. I can't wait to see the next instalment of this feud in three days time at Crown Jo- <laughs> No, they hate women's rights there. R-Truth has a lot of value as a mid-card veteran putting newer stars over. Unfortunately for his loss to Buddy Murphy here, the 24-7 title is a painfully unfunny anger around his neck, and this fell flat. AOP is still cutting promos about being really good at languages. Muy bien. See, I can speak language good too. After main eventing last week, where Montez Ford literally had a baby face, the Street Profits cut a rare in-ring promo. They're both so good on the mic, this actually worked better than their backstage skits from the last several months until they decided to ram their catchphrase into our ears, obnoxiously jumping around the crowd to their own music chanting, we want the smoke. An easily the best bout of the night, Drew McIntyre and Ricochet fought here with both Ric Flair and Hulk Hogan in their corners. Hulk Hogan being in Ricochet's of course, because some of his best friends are superheroes. Y you get that? You, you were recording that one. While their match took a while to get going last week, this one started at 10 and stayed there. Brilliantly structured around Drew not getting knocked off his feet for the first 10 minutes that made Ricochet's comeback all the more exciting. To build Team Hogan versus Flair for Crown Jewel though, the dastardly Randy Orton RKO'd Ricochet from out of nowhere to cause a DQ at the end of the match. Which makes it the second time in just a few days where the heels all work together but the babyfaces let each other get beaten up. Babyfaces are dicks. The Vikings don't mention the war experience! Raiders squash two jobbers dressed as Chicago Cubs players. In another rematch from last week, Sin Cara took on Andrade, but this time with a lady door called Carolina to counteract Zelina Vega. Andrade can cheat all on his own though, where he got his feet on the ropes for a roll-up win, while Carolina awesomely took out Vega. I can't wait to see them both at crowd jo <laughs> Charlotte is a babyface whether you like it or not, because she's blonde. That means she's going to tag with Natalia because she's blonde. And they're going to beat the Iconics because they're blonde. I can't wait to see them at Crown Jewel. Seth Rollins took on Eric Rowan in a really fun Fools Count Anywhere match ahead of the same stipulation with The Fiend on Thursday. There are a bunch of fun moments, like the obligatory merch table spot, and Rowan was protected by taking two curb stomps and having a forklift placed on him to let Rollins win. But SmackDown did a really good job building up Rowan as a main event heel, and him just being used as fodder for someone else's storyline in his first match on Raw since the draft isn't a good start. Alistair Black is still in a cupboard. Umberto Carrillo had another really good effort against the main event star, this time losing to AJ Styles. The OC beat him up afterwards, which led to the Street Profits running down for the save. So baby faces really do like each other, which could be a really fun six-man feud. Speaking of fun, just in a total car crash way, the main event segment was Divorce Court with divorce expert Jerry Lawler. He's had three, where Lana explained she wanted the split from Rusev because... He wants too much sex. He's a sex addict. To which Rusev brilliantly replied, Can you blame me? Made all the more awesome by the fact he has a moustache. But that's not consistent with Lana's relationship with Bobby Lashley, as the insinuation there has been that Rusev's not satisfying Lana in bed, so she's gone elsewhere. That's most likely the point, that Lana can't be trusted, and she's just chucking reasons at a wall. Rusev wanted to put a baby in her. He wants to ruin her modelling career. Rusev actually cheated on her, which must be true because the guy she's cheating on Rusev with told her. 
they're trying to set up Lana as an unreliable jerk. Problem is, this storyline isn't connecting, and it's Paul Heyman at his shock tactic worst. It all ended in a brawl where Rusev got punched in the dick over and over again, and then Bobby and Lana made out over his body while someone in the crowd yelled, This is weird! And that was our Go Home main event segment for Crown Jewel. Let me know what you thought of the episode by clicking the eye above my head where you can choose in all core average poor and raw for. And let me know what you thought of the Rusev segment because I'll be replying in the comments from out of nowhere. This was a frustrating episode because the foundations of Raw's new roster are being steadily set and we're getting some great in ring action, but the matches lack stakes and the infuriating parts outweighed the good. This week's Raw is poor. Racism accusations have very publicly burst out about WWE, but it's not as clear cut as you might think. Click the video on the right now to get the full story around the Jordan Miles t-shirt incident. And what do you want to see from WrestleTalk? Leave your comments on the support WrestleTalk Q&A below that, and we'll do our best to make them happen. I've been Ollie Davis, and that was wrestling.